the Lloydminster Chamber of Commerce held their 2023 Business Award Show yesterday. I had the chance to find out more about this year's winners. Taking place at the Lloyd X, the annual Business Awards for Lloydminster were handed out. Over 10 awards were given to local businesses in our community, among those being the Lifetime Achievement Award, given to those in the community who are constantly striving to make a difference. It's finding to balance your work, your life, and your volunteer time. And my wife sacrificed a lot too in younger days when we had the kids at home and I was gone volunteering somewhere doing the hockey stuff and she was at home with the kids. So it's a, it's a full family award. It was Violet Eyes Optometry that really stole the show, not only winning the Businesswoman of the Year, but also walking away with the biggest award of the night, the Business of the Year Award. We have an all-female staff. Uh, Dr. Gannett joined us in 2020, no, 2019, 18, 18 <laughs> partnered in 2022. Um, yeah, and we've grown to 12 amazing female staff. Um, and we just really love this community and love being moms and wives in this community um, and love being business owners in this community. Other awards given out last night include Nonprofit of the Year, won by Big Brothers Big Sisters, and the Diversity Award, which was presented to Lakeland College. Cowan Dunlop, Primetime, Local News. Lakeland College is holding an open house today and Saturday as at both the Lloydminster and Vermilion campuses for students in the community to learn more about the college. It's to give them an opportunity to see uh, the hands-on component of the learning here, um, how all the programs make them job ready, um, and for students to see um, just everything that we offer and the facilities, we have state-of-the-art facilities um, and incredible faculty. Lakeland College offers a wide range of programs that give them the tools they need to enter the workforce right out of school. We have a vast variety of programs from agricultural sciences, university transfer, business, trades and technology. We have power engineering, um, so a little bit of something for everybody. Um, very hands-on, practical education uh, for people to be job ready when they're completed. At the beginning of the fall semester, the college saw a 12% increase in their enrollment, something the college is proud of. Just as of September, uh, just a flash snapshot um, of our enrollment, it has increased here for fall of 2023. Um, and that's super exciting for us here at the college. We're excited that students are here uh, learning and that that's going to make them job ready when they're done. The open house is taking place again tomorrow at both campuses from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. To register for free, visit lakelandcollege.ca slash open house or register at the door. It's time now for the Entertainment Corner. Here is our Ty Roswell. I'm Ty Roswell and I'm here once again at May Cinema 6 to give you the scoop on what's playing this weekend in the world of movies. So the first movie on our list this week is The Creator, a new action adventure movie directed by Garrett Edwards and rated PG-13. As a future war between the human race and artificial intelligence rages on, ex-Special Forces agent Joshua is recruited to hunt down and kill the creator, an elusive architect of advanced AI. So if you're looking to spice things up with an action-adventure movie, well, May Cinema Six has you covered with the creator. Now, it's too big of an event not to talk about once again. Taylor Swift Eras Tour, still playing here in theaters, but not for much longer. You don't need to fight Ticketmaster to see the Eras Tour at Mason Cinema 6. This film brings the action and joy of the Eras Tour in which Taylor Swift takes a victory lap of her catalog spanning 17 years of music. So for all you Swifties out there, make sure you get your tickets and get on down to Mason Cinema 6. Now our big premiere this weekend is a little bit different than the last couple weekends of premieres. It's Killers of the Flower Moon. Rated R, Martin Scorsese returns to the big screen with another epic film, led by Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. In the 1920s, the Osage tribe finds oil on their land. This discovery leads to murder and ultimately a deadly fight for power and wealth. So if you're a person who is into crime drama as well, Killers of the Flower Moon will have you covered. And that's all the time we have this week. But remember, as always, 
If none of these movies are up to your speed that we talked about today, there are plenty of others to choose from here at May Cinema 6. Now, ever since you read the weather yesterday, I'm uh, taking, I'm trying not to take for granted the nice weather that we have today. Yes, for sure. I know I said last night that it was supposed to be clear skies, but we got like a spout of <laughs> rainfall, which I was shocked by. But today, very sunny day, a little yes. bit more chillier than what we've seen. A little bit of wind in but, there, But yeah. yeah, but with that sun, it did feel like, it, it's still feeling like a really good day out today. A perfect, I think, crisp fall weather. I think is how I would describe today. Uh, with the wind coming in at 26 kilometers per hour, it did feel more on the cooler side, but we are sitting at 13 degrees here currently, so that's not too bad, and the sun is still peeking out. And then across the region, similar temperatures as well, 13 also out in Marwain and St. Paul, 12 in Provost and 14 in Wainwright, Vermilion, Vegreville, Edmonton, Bonneville, Cold Lake and Lac La Biche. So a lot of 14 degree weather on the Alberta side. And on the Saskatchewan side, 14 in Maidstone, Meadow Lake, Green Lake and Pierceland and 13 in Isla Cross, uh, St. Walberg, North Battleford and out in Macklin. So similar temperatures to the border city. Overnight tonight in North Battleford will drop down to minus one, so it will be a cooler of an evening overnight. Mainly clear skies, so a little bit of cloud coverage, um, but it will be on the colder side with it being below zero. And then tomorrow, a high of just 11 degrees, so it may feel a little bit cooler as well. And there's about a 55% chance of some showers in places in the afternoon, so maybe sporadic rainfall, and it will be partially sunny skies. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake, it will be clear, however, it will be cold with a low of minus three as your evening weather uh, or your evening temperature. So it will be on the colder side, but the skies will still be clear. And then tomorrow, expect a very cloudy day out in Cold Lake with, hot, with a high of just 11 degrees. That wind is at 11 kilometers per hour, so it's, it's, it'll feel a little bit on the cooler side, especially with the heavy cloud coverage. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster, hopefully no rain. There's, it says 1%, so who knows, uh, but we will drop down to minus one. So we will also be very cold uh, as we go below zero and a little bit of cloud coverage for the evening. And then tomorrow will be a high of 10 degrees, so it will be chillier. And like North Battleford, there is a ch about 49% chance of some showers uh, in the afternoon. So definitely be out on the lookout for that. Uh, so it will be a cooler day, but similar to what we saw today here with that sun peeking through. And then over the next three days, here in Lloydminster, a high of 10 and a low of minus 1 for tomorrow. And then on Sunday, things cool off to those single-digit temperatures. 41% uh, chance of some showers in the afternoon with a high of 5 and a low of minus 8. And then on Monday, things are cold. We will be below 0 as our daytime high will be minus 1. And it will be minus 11 for your evening temperature. Cloudy skies as well so we're definitely getting into those fall winter temperatures that is your first look at your weather forecast i'll have more overnight temperatures later on in the show thanks abby after the break we see the saskatchewan government looking to pass the parents bill of rights in spite of protests I'm joined by Jordan Pryor, the Associate Director of Brand for Cornerstone Co-op, and she is here today to talk about the Co-op Growing Leaders Program, which is in association with 4-H Alberta. And so thank you so much for being with me today, Jordan. You are so welcome. And so Jordan, tell me about the Co-op Growing Leaders Program and where it kind of started and what it's going to look like for the 2023-24 4-H season. Yeah, so back in 2021, 2022, like uh, post-COVID, we noticed that 4-H groups or clubs were kind of struggling when it came to membership. Um, coming out of COVID, people just weren't either wanting to join 4-H or some of the clubs were actually closing, unfortunately. And 
um, as someone who was in 4-H for 11 years, um, that was heartbreaking and I really wanted to do something for them. So uh, we kind of thought, what what could, what could avenue can we explore? And I was like, how cool would it be if we sponsored any new member going into 4-H so that it kind of removes that barrier or excuse to want to join because it's such an amazing program for youth. Um, and there's different levels of registration too. So there's club level, um, there's district, there's provincial. So we sponsor all of the above um, just to get the kids in. And we put um, a social media post out there and it went viral. It got over a hundred shares. Um, and we had clubs reaching out to us that were like, this is amazing. Um, to the point where like, we actually had one club that signed up nine new members. Like, I think it was Murnam or Innisfree, like a very small town, small community. So that was amazing. Um, and then it, what had happened is 4-H Alberta, we kind of just did this on our own, on a cornerstone level. And 4-H Alberta got word of it and called us and was like, hey, this is an amazing program that you guys started um, to the point where like, we're getting notified about it. Would you like to partner for the next, the following year? And we're like, of course we would. Um, and so we were like, actually, let's put it out to Federated Co-op to get us to help to talk to other regional uh, local Alberta co-ops and see who else would like to partner on board for 2023-2024. Um, so we had a bunch of meetings. Um, we met with everybody and we built this beautiful partnership. It's just starting um, with four, five other local co-ops, um, six, including Cornerstone. Um, so we partnered with six local co-ops, Federated Co-op out of Saskatoon and 4-H Alberta to bring the sponsorship level to a gold sponsor of $50,000 to spend on this new uh, co-op growing leaders program, um, which is something we did not ever see coming and is amazing. Um, and then going forward, so we're currently like we have applications open right now until November 20th, um, just because lots of the kids, especially being in a rural setting, they're still figuring out what kind of calves they want to have. Um, their way days are in November. That's why we we made it until November 20th. And then we're going to have a review meeting and see what we can do, what's working and what we can make better for 2024. And going into next year, we're hoping to build that sponsorship and hopefully even go above and beyond to a hundred thousand dollar level sponsorship eventually is what that looks like uh one more thing that i would just like to mention is uh the other local co-ops that we partnered with this year so um there's arrowwood co-op central alberta co-op Pemina co-op pincher creek co-op and westview co-op that have partnered with us um, on the local alberta co-op level and so, Jordan, what are the boundaries going to be for those in the Cornerstone Co-op kind of region in order for them to be able to receive the payment for their first time membership? Um, our shooting area goes all the way from St. Paul and surrounding area down all the way down to Provost. Um, then you have Vermilion, Wainwright, um, Elk Point, Two Hills, Dewberry and Manville. Um, so we're pretty, we have a pretty healthy budget so far. So if if they're just on the outskirts of that trading area, um, we're still going to sponsor them. So, And Jordan, you mentioned 4-H calves, which would, of course, be the beef program. But are all programs in 4-H going to be included in this program? Not sure how clubs work nowadays, but when I was in 4-H, you could literally join any 4-H project. Um, and so that can include like snowmobiling or dog or cat or hamster 4-H. So um, any kind of project will help you with your registration fees. And if there are some youth that are interested in getting involved in 4-H, where can they go to get more info about joining a 4-H club as well as taking advantage of this amazing program? Yeah, they can go to get more information on our Co-op Growing Leaders program. They can go to our Cornerstone Co-op uh, website or they can email jordan.prior at cornerstone.crs. Um, there is, if you check out our social media, specifically our Facebook page, um, we have the link where you would go and fill out all your details and sign up. Um, and all that information actually through that Google form goes directly to myself and 4-H Alberta. So we automatically see um, who signed up and we take care of your registration fees from there. Thank you so much for all the information today, Jordan. And hopefully we will see a lot more new 4-H members this coming up year. You are so welcome. Thanks for having me.
Next week, it's going to be a very busy week here at the Lloyd X. Coming up on Wednesday night, it's Feastival. This is an opportunity to enjoy delicious locally sourced food that's been prepared in-house by the chefs here at the Lloyd X. So it's a great celebration of all the great food that you can find locally, and it's a chance to visit with friends, family, and neighbors as well. One of the items that's on the menu is a bison chili served in a sourdough bread bowl. That's just one of the items that's going to be on the menu for Wednesday night. For all the details and to get your tickets, go online to LloydEx.com. Then coming up on Thursday next week here at the Lloyd X, they're teaming up with the Lloydminster and District Co-op for Trunk or Treat. So get the kids in their Halloween costume on Thursday night. The doors are going to open at 3.30 that afternoon and they'll be able to go trunk or treating indoors and get some great treats and see some great displays as well. That event on Thursday, it's free to attend. Once again, you'll find all the details at LloydEx.com. Coming up this weekend, a really cool event is going to be in our area. Maybe you're somebody who is a huge fan of the Edmonton Oilers and you've got a great collection of hockey cards. You're going to want to head to the Border City Card Show. It's this Sunday out at Rolling Green Fairways and they have everything, all different kinds of cards, NHL cards, Pokemon cards, baseball cards, and so much more. Plus, this event, there's going to be a chance to win some great door prizes. There's going to be raffles and there's going to be a very special guest, retired Edmonton Oilers defenseman Chris Joseph is going to be there. He's going to be signing some autographs. He's also going to be taking some questions as well and talking about his career and so much more. This event is a fun one for the entire family. And when you head out, admission only $5, teens $2, kids six and under, they get in for free. And proceeds from this event are going to benefit a number of local organizations in our community, including the B. Fisher Foundation. The Border City Card Show is coming up this Sunday out at Rolling Green. Gets underway at 11 a.m. And coming up tomorrow night, the Lloydminster Kinsmen hope you can join them to celebrate the end of harvest season at their Harvest Hoedown Cabaret. They've got two live bands, Main Street and Trick Rider, so you'll be able to dance the night away. And there's still a few tickets left. Just get in touch with the Lloydminster Kinsmen Club to get your tickets. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. What's Happening is brought to you by Northern Factory Workwear, Circle Drive East, Saskatoon, and Highway 17 South, Lloydminster. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. honor to be joined this morning by Roger Earl. Roger is one of the founding members of Fog Hat. Roger, you have been in this business for such a long time. I can't imagine some of the stories you have. I'd love to get into some of those stories, but first of all, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome, Stacey. It's a pleasure. Um, I've, I've been up for at least an hour now, so <laughs> I'm good. Uh, the stories, yeah, there might be children listening, so we'll hold back on some of the more exotic tales <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep keep it those two a minimum today well uh, okay. roger i want to talk about uh, the album uh sonic mojo this is the first album in in quite a while for you guys so tell me a little bit about what inspired this album well actually uh the last album we made was uh seven years ago which was under the influence um uh, the kim simmons the guitar player from savoy brown played on that and as did Scott Holt, who is now our singer, he joined us two years ago. Hold on a second. Uh, go Beautiful. Look at that cover art. Uh, hold on. Get gets better. Gets better. Hold on. Gets better. This is a lot of nostalgia for me. The cover art. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful record. Purple vinyl. Um, let's see. How did it come about? Um, we have our own studio down in uh, Deland, Florida. Uh, when we lost our lead singer, Lonesome Day, about 20, 22 years ago, I think it was, I decided that we had to have somewhere to record. Otherwise, we're not going to be a viable band. So we've actually made four of our studio albums since a day passed and four live albums. Live albums, uh, 
uh, love doing live albums. This is a live band. This record we started actually about about three years ago because COVID obviously hit everybody. Right. What a nightmare that was. So that sort of put a halt on everything. Um, actually, uh, it was like my first vacation I've had since I was 12 years <laughs> old. But um, the record, um, it's uh, it's got a little bit of everything. Kim Simmons, the, the guitar player and leader of Savoy Brown, wrote some songs for us. We were doing a number of dates together over here in the States. And um, Kim actually played on our last studio album about seven years ago. And after we'd finished, he played on about four songs. And... After we'd finished, he said, you know, I'd really like to write some songs to Fogcat. And I said, that would be great so long as you're going to play on them. Well, unfortunately, uh, Kim couldn't play because he got ill. He passed last Christmas, last December, rather. And uh, But he sent me four tunes. We did three of them. We held one back for a future album. And um, I was really, really pleased with the way they turned out. I don't know, there's a song coming to mind. I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. I like <laughs> it, which I do. <laughs> well, this, the one single that's been released is She's a Little Bit of Everything, which Kim had a hand in. Uh, tell me about that. It, it's very uh, true, I think, to the Foghat roots. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's a real rock and roll tune. It's It was actually, or we, the band claims, we claim, that it was written about Kim's wife, Debbie, who... Uh, uh, obviously, we've been re Kim and I have been reconnected back in '76 after we'd left the band. Kim had a, a large degree of success, as did Falcat. So, um, and we've been friends ever since. Um, and the song was written about Debbie, his wife. She's a little bit of everything. And what a nice <laughs> thing to say about your wife. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, great lyrics. It's about how uh, how fantastic women are. Actually, most of our songs are about women or something like that. Sex, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, that involves women, I think, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Roger, you guys are on tour. You've been on tour for a little bit now, and you still have um, into the new year you're going. Are you finding that at the shows you have real, like, full generations of fans, you know, the ones that started with you initially, and now their kids and, and their kids are coming out and enjoying the shows? Yeah. Yeah. Um... We, you know, we uh, Falkett's had our, our songs released on uh, car commercials, burger commercials, uh, obviously in a number of films. So, but I think um, Guitar Hero really uh, started something for the younger generation. For a while there, we had all these like six, seven, and eight year olds saying, Will you show my guitar, please? <laughs> uh, which is cool. Um, you know, Rock and roll has been around probably since the 50s, the actual term, and it's stayed with us. Um, you know, it's it's got many sort of uh, coats and hats that it wears, but it's rock and roll. It's, you know, basically it's American music. Um, you know, this is the land of music, including where you come from, and I'm related. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where the music comes from. You know, when everybody came over here from Europe, and the Africans came over, were dragged from Africa. Blues, that was the start of it. And then you had jazz, and then bebop, uh, rock and roll, country music, um, you know, the, uh, gospel music. This is the land of music. I'm talking about North America. Um, and it's given music to the world. It's one of the reasons that I wanted to come here, and, I, and I've lived here, is because... There's this beautiful melting pot of people and all those musical ideas that came from those other countries or from all around the world get joined and it comes out like magic. And, and I think even to this day, uh, North America gives music to the world, uh, you know, rhythm and blues, country. It's the rest of the world, like, takes it from this land. So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, and we're doing it still. In fact, I'm going to roll till I'm old and rock till I drop. I don't feel very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roger, it has been a pleasure speaking to you. Unfortunately, we're out of time this morning, but 
I want to encourage everybody to <laughs> buy the album. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's just amazing. And, and I, I've enjoyed the music since the beginning. And it's great that you've got generations of people listening now. So thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. It's been my pleasure too, Stacey. Maybe we'll get to meet each other one of these days. We've got one more story before we're all wrapped up tonight. A popular TikTok creator and Saskatchewan sweetheart Bella Thompson has received another package from pop singer Halsey. Well, I peeked in the big box and I can tell you it's who you think it's from. Halsey? Yeah. <gasps> Wait, are these like some... Those are her favorite sweet treats. The nine-year-old was born with three rare conditions and has undergone many treatments and surgeries in her life, including a life-saving bowel transplant in August. But her energy and enthusiasm have inspired millions on social media. Singer Halsey had sent Bella a gift in 2021 after one of her TikTok videos went viral. I think that is so sweet and she is so adorable. Oh, I've actually seen some of her TikToks on my feed before and yeah. she's just the sweetest girl ever so I'm glad you know she's you know having people are having those conversations about what she's been going through and her struggles and you know supporting her too I think that's you know the good side of social media is when you see that yeah and you see celebrities big names like big Halsey. names like Halsey. Halsey seems to be one of her favorite artists so having her see better. that, that just, and reach out that's just those are memories that you just carry with for yep. the rest of your life and it means so much you know? and she can inspire other people exactly as well. and that is all the time we have for you on primetime local news thanks so much for watching and have a great night